Assalamualaikum. You're looking at a, the Underground Railroad television show named after the great one, Harriet Tubman. I had great respect for the Underground Railroad. And Assalamualaikum to everybody. And you're looking at the Underground Railroad television show. We come on every Saturday night at 1030 p.m. Channel 19, Saturday. But you can see us on YouTube. Okay, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I am so honored, you know what? Um, I wanna say thank you to my crew, Zazelle McKenzie, Alan, okay, Elma, David, okay. I'll be forgetting the brother, the brother's name. What's the what's other crew member name? I keep on forgetting. Tell uh, uh, you know what, man, don't feel offended, but there's a brother back there, you know what, that um, me and him, we talk, we talk, he's a very competitive person, and you know what, I like him if I had to go to battle, battle, I love to go to battle with him because he's going to tell me, you know what, whether he agree or disagree with me, whether I like it or not, and I respect him for that. Even though the name is eluding me, but he knows who I'm talking about. So, you know what, but I got Brother Johnny, and you know what, you know what, this guy has his own show. It's phenomenal. It's great. And people that look at the Underground Railroad television show, I want you to support them. Talk, tell them about yourself and your show. So, I'm Johnny Johnson. I am a... Professional. I am a EMT by profession. Mm -hmm. I have a. I've my degree is in international business and economics. So that's my educational background. I do a. Uh, I could be found in a meetup group called Holiness in the Metaverse. Mm -hmm. So that's the place where people can come and and learn. Mm -hmm. I had to tell people, forgive me, forgive him, but forgive my crew member's name, but he's still important to me. Okay. And you know what? David Koss, man, this guy's out of California. And you know what? We do a show called the Underground Railroad Television Show in Chicago on our podcast. And he has his own YouTube website. And please, David, tell people who you are. Well, Clifton, I'm... 66 years old this year, and I'm from Iowa, but I'm living in California on the coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just uh, working away out here every day. And uh, I work as a security guard for Allied Universal uh, Security Protection. And mm -hmm. uh, just uh, glad to know you for all these years. And uh, we have several things in common. And uh, Happy to be here today. Okay, t brother, you got to tell us where your YouTube platform uh, is, and you know what, and people support his YouTube platform. Well, I'm on the YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash C is in Charlie slash David L. Koss. But uh, I've got a few videos on my page, mm -hmm. uh, five of them from the last presidential election even though the Dominion machines overthrew it and got Biden in there to office. But uh, uh, <laughs> this was just kind of a, a practice run for me. Uh, I also have a couple videos on there concerning the new molecular south spun electron fluid concept mm -hmm. and uh, a few others as well. But uh, like I say, I'm, I'm always happy to uh, uh, inform people of any of that that they like to know. And you got a great picture up there too, brother. <laughs> We can, okay, but I want, you know what, I would like to add, we talk about, I want to, first I want to ask about an international issue that is going on right now. There is a young lady that is a basketball player that is being held, a detained in Russia right now because she attempted to take, I think, CBC or, or something Hashish. like that. Hashish. Hashish. And... I would like to ask you, do you think that the Russians are being too harsh about holding this basketball lady, b basketball player? Okay. What's her name? Um, her name is Brittany Griner. Okay. So 
is are they being too harsh? It, it, it depends on what you're comparing it to. But as far as Russia goes, it seems like this is to be expected. You know, this is, you know, traditionally how they treat uh, crime or this particular kind of crime. So I don't think they're being exceptionally hard for what their their customarily what their custom is or their laws provide for. Mm hmm. Well, do, do you think it's justifiable, seeing as though she, they didn't, she did not follow Russian law? Is it justifiable that they would give her 10 years? Because I saw that on the news, they gave her 10 years. Well, I, I missed that one. I've I actually been paying close attention, but I, um, so it must have just came down sometime today. Um, yeah, that's pretty rough. Uh, Stay long. That's, yeah. that's pretty tough, and it's probably standard, mm -hmm. right? But... Uh, uh, Two things. One, you know, she shouldn't have taken it, right? I mean, it, the onus is on her, right? and it, you know, I'm, I'm. That's one um, benefit to having some education in international mm -hmm. um, politics, etc., mm -hmm. uh, because you get familiar with society as a whole, mm -hmm. and you be, come to understand that different parts of the world have different laws yeah. and different law types of law enforcement or ways they enforce their law. So what you can get away here, get away with here, you can't get away with there. Yeah, and, you know, and even if the laws were very similar, you're not at home. Yeah. There, you, here you may have connections and you get uh, friends and people, um, maybe relatives who may, cause, be able to support you, it's different than when you're overseas. It's, you know, harder to yeah. reach you. I think she plays for the women's bas basketball team in America. Mercury. Oh, no, Merc not, not the uh, Mercury. No, no. The Phoenix something. Mer okay. And, <laughs> you know, uh, bro Brother David, I'd like to ask you the same yeah, thing. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I think, I think, yeah, Phoenix Mercury. The, Fe yeah, so. the Phoenix Mercury. That's yeah. the basketball team. And her wife wants her back. <laughs> Real bad. And, you know, David, I would like to ask you the, the <laughs> same thing. Do you think the detainment of this young basketball player for taking these substances, attempting to take these substances out of Russia is too harsh? Um, I don't know uh, all the specifics, but... Uh, you know, if, if if you or me went over to China mm -hmm. and uh, on a trip, would would you want to take something that's illegal over there? No. I mean, pick up an illegal out of the country or bring something illegal into the country. If we were going over there for, you know, a sponsored athletic uh, mm -hmm. uh, program, do you mm -hmm. think do you think you'd do that, no. Clifton? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I would. Else. <laughs> but I would I'll say, since I don't use, try to not get myself involved, but I say, no, I'm not, not even going to think about it, but do something like that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think about it either. I don't know why an athlete would be doing something like that that they know is against the law over there. You know, I, I, don't, I don't understand the, the situation or the circumstances, but it, seems, it just seems Seems like another crazy thing that's happening over here, like the the fuel prices and the food prices and the and the gas prices. Everything's going up, and mm -hmm. it shouldn't be. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know when when we when we talk about um we talk about global issues. I would like to ask you and you and Johnny. I want to ask you: the majority of jobs, manufacturing jobs, have went abroad to China and other places. Do you think that the how how do you think that the United States can compete with China in manufacturing in volume when their workers get paid way less than what a union worker gets paid in the United States of America? It doesn't seem that that we can be very competitive. You know that's being borne out over our economic history that mm -hmm. you're just not going to get. Americans to work for those type of wages mm -hmm. uh, in this particular economy. Mm -hmm. So things will have to change drastically for us to compete in manufacturing. 
And David, can the United States of America compete in manufacturing in volume with China because they, their workers get paid way less than what a union worker gets in the United States of America? Yes, we can. We can compete because we grow more food than they do. Mm. And if you if you know what if you know if you know what I mean, you're going to need to eat some food tonight because you're going to get hungry before you can do any kind of manufacturing or production or mm. any kind of even creativity. You got to eat food, you know. Mm -hmm. And China, at the moment, with the Wuhan dam going and the flooding over there. There's millions and millions of people with no food to eat tonight. So it doesn't, I don't see it just as a manufacturing question. I see it as a, a population existing, you know, okay. ha happily first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know something? I'm getting the signal from Miss Elma Lucas, okay, that of Elma and Company that I have three minutes left. And you know what? Would you, you have any? Finishing comments. Maybe, maybe there was something I, you wanted to say, and I didn't give you the opportunity to say it. No, I've uh, said everything I, I wanted to say. When your show come on, want to tell us about your show. Okay, so I have a segment uh, that what we meet on YouTube. It's a uh, one of them is a teaching show, or called Holiness in the Metaverse, and then we have a dialogue show um, that you know, I do up. with you. Okay, I always take advantage of the time we got left. You know what, um, David, do you have any finishing comments and tell us where that great YouTube website is? We got, we don't have that much time left. Thank you, Clifton. You're I welcome. appreciate everything you've done today. Uh, so just so if you're a guest or a listener, just go to the YouTube dash slash C slash David L. Koss. You can view my videos there. Thank you, both of you, for a wonderful show today. Okay, and you know what? I want to say, you know what, to the listening audience, like, share. You know what, share this on your social media platform. And I want to say thank you to my crew members because you know what? I cannot do this alone. And you know what? I want to say to the people, Assalamu alaikum, and the things that came out of my mouth that were wrong came from myself, and the things that were right came, came from my life. And I want to thank y'all. And I'm always looking for guests to come on the underground.
out because you know what? It's a fool that drops out of school. <laughs> okay? And it's incumbent upon you if you have parents or role models, positive role models in your life to listen to those positive role models because see all this great? Your little friends don't know what your mom and daddy know. See? And they're yeah, trying to get to where you're going, but then you think that they know. But the thing is, they don't know. Okay? Well, the military is a good option. But let it be known, the military is not for everybody because there are people that's going to go to trade school and college. And trade school is not for everybody and college is not for everybody. But the military, they create advantages once you get out. Degree. I could have went in as an officer. But see, when you're young, you think you know everything. Mm -hmm. and you think you, yeah, you think that your little friends know everything. Your parents have been where you're trying to go. And that's true. Okay? And I know a lot of students and a lot of young men who thought about dropping out or skipping their education. And I wanted to know, did you have any words of wisdom for these young individuals? Yeah, I did not. I'm going to make somebody mad because you know what, I didn't go to the Army, I didn't go to the Marines, I didn't go to the Air Force. Lord knows I wanted to go to the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> so my scores were not high enough, so I went to the Navy. So, but overall, I say, in my opinion, I think the Air Force is the best because you know what it's like working a regular job. In most cases, mm -hmm. what I mean by working a regular job, you post, you probably work like eight hours, nine hours a day, but military, with you, <laughs> the Air Force, and they got the best food. <laughs> they, um, you know what? And you have to be really, really bright. That's why I didn't make the cut, though, but we took me. <laughs> and there's a lot of individuals that I know. There's a lot of individuals that I know that would like to join the military, but they hold back because they find it a fear or they don't have enough confidence to chase their goal or their dream of doing that. So I wanted to know, was it any words you would like to share to us? I, I was, I, I was, I would say, and you know what? I know this is not, I know this is not a religious show. I would say, before you make decisions, like in regards to that, which I didn't do, you should consult your Creator. Or your high being before you make a decision. Now, this is not a religious thing, but you should rely on the Creator's understanding and not your understanding. I didn't do that though. I ran with more. <laughs> and I and I do understand, and there's no judgment here because honestly, it's times where I, by me being a child, I understand because it's times where I ran away from certain situations instead of praying, or I jumped ahead too far and I regretted a lot of things that I did that I know I can't take back. Mm -hmm. So I definitely understand where you're coming from because it is a lot of individuals who hasn't made as many of the mistakes that these adults made because we're young. They've been through it already. So it's like we want to get the point out to them that live young while you can Chase your dreams. Focus on your education while you can. Yeah, don't call, don't don't focus on boyfriend and girlfriend. Don't even focus on the job. You know what your job is? Getting the best education that you can get. Whether you go to trade school, you go to correspondent school, it's an excuse when people say they cannot make it. There's plenty of opportunity out there. You can yeah, you, know, you can go to college for free. <laughs> you can go to trade school for free. People kill me when it says no opportunities. There are plenty of opportunities. You just can't sleep at 12 o'clock. You got to get up out there. You got to get out there. Bed. That's a cop out saying there's no opportunities out there. Okay? So, but listen to your parents, though. Because I'm going to emphasize this to you and your listening audience. That your parents have your best interest in mind, not your little friend that's 15 or 16 years old, okay? Your parents, because nobody's going to love you and care for, for you like they, nobody, nobody.
okay? So listen to them, because you know if I had to do it over again, you asked me what would I do if I had to do it again, I would have probably listened to my parents, went to college, and went to general ROTC, and then went in his office. Did my 20 years and retired at 38 years old, <laughs> where everybody else is still working, you still got to work. So why not work till you're 38 years old? I really appreciate you for coming and doing this interview. This is such a pleasure. This is an honor because you didn't have to do this. And I really love the fact that you sat here and did this interview. And we hope you share this on YouTube. We put this on YouTube. But you know what? We got something funny after the show. We got more job just to, y'all, as you look at the credits, you know what, don't. Some funny little moments for you. I love you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what it's about. It's about family. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, those are my finishing comments. Thank Hello, my name is Ashana Wilburn, and I am a senior at Bowen High School. Look at Raheem Bradley. And where else? Let's see the producer on the railroad road. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> As you look at the credits, you know what, don't. Some funny little moments, but hello, my name is Ashana Wilburn, and today I will be interviewing my grandfather. My name is Clifton Raheem Bradley. And today we're gonna to share some intel on his military past and what he did or does. Does that sound right? Just get a cut. Don't be mumbling. Hello, my name is Ashana Wilburn, and today I will be. Looking at the Underground Railroad television show, we come on every Saturday night at 10.30 p.m. Channel 19, Saturday. But you can see us on YouTube, okay? Seven days a week, 24 hours. If you don't believe in conspiracy, then you shouldn't be looking at the Underground Railroad. The New World Order. Auction and Negro Sales. $40 40 years of Negro Man Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment. Moon posting a flag and playing golf. There are three truths, the dreadful bitter truth, your truth, and the Clifton Bradley Underground Railroad's truth. We as the media, mission, and duty is to make you aware of what's happening in our city, community. All aboard. All aboard. Come on up Clifton, and beat, beat the drums. Assalamu alaikum, this is Brother Clifton Raheem Bradley, and this is the, the second part of a our special edition of the Underground Railroad television show. We always talking about the bang bang shoot them up and how bad the kids are and about them walking with their pants down. But you know what? We're gonna go have some solutions. And guess what? I'm gonna have my grandkids on. Now everybody brag on their grandkids. I ain't no exception <laughs> to the rule, okay? So my grandkids, I want to, you know what? First of all, I want to thank both of y'all for coming on Underground Railroad Television Show. So introduce yourself to the people that are looking. Look. My name is Zariah, and I'm 13 years old. I'm in eighth grade. 
Okay, go ahead. My name is Jeremiah. I'm eight years old and I'm in third grade. Whoa, man, man, you getting up there. Yeah, y'all let me know that I'm old man. <laughs> but uh, these, like I said, these are my grandkids, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about school. Do y'all wanna see how do y'all grandparents or y'all aunts or anything like that? Miss Brown, Miss Brad, Aunt Michelle, y'all wanna see how to do? Yeah. Um. Hello. All Hello, my everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey. You know what? I want to ask y'all. What school do y'all go to? What school do y'all go to? And this is in Chicago. Pedophiles, y'all stay away because y'all hurt things. It's going to be a problem. Okay. <laughs> but what schools do y'all go to? Um, we go Green Elementary. Window E Green Elementary. Yeah. Okay. Y'all go to Window E Green. Is it a great school? Y'all better say it's a great school. Yes. What makes it so great? Oh, uh, what it makes so great is that we get to have recess, do math, mm -hmm. reading, mm -hmm. social studies, and science. Mm -hmm. What makes what makes what makes one do we green? And you know what? Uh, <laughs> Just school I attended, plus the other grandmother attended. What makes that so great? Um, the teachers, like, they really care about you. And, like, they'll, they give you warnings. Like, if you're late on an assignment, they'll tell you, like, you have to get this turned in and stuff. And, like, we have a great principal. Wow, man. I, 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 you know what? I, I, lo I love that. You know, and you know what? Can y'all tell me, without getting any of y'all teachers mad, who are some of, who are some of y'all favorite teachers and why? Um, we're we gonna narrow it down to one, but we know all of them. Y'all love all of them, but we are gonna narrow it down to one. Why are they great teachers? Why is it a great teacher? Who? They are. Who? Um, my great teacher is my math and science teacher. Because I love math so much. Mm. What's his name? Her name? Miss Smith. Okay. She's your, your, your favorite teacher. But first of all, all the teachers at Wonder Weed Green, y'all do a great job because all they do is talk about them, how great they are anyway. But who's your? My favorite teacher is Miss Smith. Like, she was my third, my, my fourth grade. My fourth grade teacher, mm -hmm. and like she's very nice and kind, and she really cares about me. You know what, parents? Why is it important to listen to your parents? Is it important to listen to your parents? Yes. And why do your parents have your, your they have your best interests in mind? Or do your friends have your best interests in mind? Who, who, who has your best interests in mind? Um, so I think both of them have my best interest in mind. And for the first question, like, is it important? I think, like, it's only important if you're following positive directions from them. Because positive following positive directions can save your life and keep you out of trouble. In a different way. Turn my cap around because I got to think. <laughs> uh, I got to think about that because you know what, y'all making me think. You know, who should you listen to first? Your parent or yep. your 10-year-old your friend? Yep. When they're telling you to do something good, who should you listen to first? Your parent. Why do you say that? Because if you don't listen to them, you're going to get in trouble. Oh, okay. That's the reason why? Oh. Or in flag football and tennis. So, like I say, I, you know what? I, you know what? I want to thank both of y'all for accepting the invitation. How was the day?